Good. Go for it. Hi. Harrison and Keys are hanging out with Nota um, Baloy. <laughs> Nota Baloy, that's that's your name. No, no, Nshamulo Baloy is my Nshamulo name. Baloy. Uh, and that's N B, and then N B stands for Nota Bena. Ah. So yeah, that's a nickname I got in high school. Why did they call you Nota Bena? Because my N B. That's why. Oh, get yeah. it, get it. So, I yeah. wanted to to us. Why? Mandela asked us to destroy the NC if, if they. If they let us down, if they do what the apartheid government did to us, uh -huh. then our job is to destroy the ANC. And Jacob Zuma is fulfilling the promise he made to Mandela. Are you skeptics or other people might critique that similar to the EFF, MK comes from the ANC? Well, it's just if EFF is also contributing to destroying the EFF. I don't support the EFF personally, but I support those that support the EFF in the cause of the destruction of the ANC. Mm as it currently stands. The ANC right now is a Zionist-owned and controlled movement that parades as if it is a progressive organization. Can't they? Meanwhile, I mean, their, their, their founders, the people that funded them, were Zionists. Hmm. They were the same people that are defending Israel. So now all of the ANC are wearing all these things and supporting Palestine, but the actual organization and who funds it are Zionists, people that are protecting Israel. And those people that are not funding the ANC currently right now are funding rival parties, the Oppenheimers, etc., mm. etc., et you know, all of them to ensure that the ANC, uh, if it maybe loses support with its uh, known voter base, can gain support through the use of other proxies that are being introduced to diminish the votes for parties like the MK and the EFF. Can the everyday South African afford to, um, I'll say, destroy the ANC? Because so where we're sitting mm. now, it's easy for us to say because of our privilege where we say destroy. Mm. Um, mm. But the everyday South African that struggles and, you know, doesn't have the privilege, mm. the political instability that yeah, could come as a result of, the can best, they afford to? That's the best thing. Because you know what? You remove that saviour. And then you eliminate the savior complex. As long as the ANC is still there as a savior, mm. you know what I mean? It can be used to destroy. What should a young person do if they want to educate themselves on, 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 on who to vote for? But we're not just going to listen to you say yeah. MK I don't is think the way. I don't think young people should be thinking about who to vote for. I think young people should be convincing people to vote for them. I think young people should know that the people that have been in leadership have failed so mm. dismally that you shouldn't be trusting any of them with your votes. Because we've seen that they cannot be trusted. You know what I mean? I think you should trust yourself. And I think you should be running. You could run as an independent now, you know, and you should make the difference that you want to make and then leave the accountability on failure to yourself. You know what I mean? If you fail your own community, it should be you that failed your community because you failed to stand up for your community. I stand up for my community. Mm. I fight when the traffic cops are not doing their job. I fight when the potholes are not there. I fight when our black brothers are being abused by violent cops and being slapped up for small little inferences or whatever it is. You know what I mean? I fight that. I fight the police brutality. I fight the brutalization of students and everything else. You know what I mean? And it's not like anyone is paying me for this. Got it. You know what I mean? I risk my life for this. I risk my safety for this. I risk my freedom for this. But I fight. And I hope that by me fighting, I can encourage other people to see that, yo, you can fight. I don't spend 18 hours in the gym all day just to look like I've got muscles. I've got mu or look like I can fight. I muscle. fight. <laughs> you know what I mean? I fight. And I've never lost a fight. Mm. You know what I mean? So... That comes from the practicing of fighting. Random thoughts about fighting. Mm. Um, somebody said that they struggle to fight um, for, 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 for some of us because we're not fighting for ourselves. Mm. Is, do you share those sentiments? I struggle to fight for myself. So therefore I empathize with those who struggle to fight for themselves. Uh -huh. There's so many times I struggle to fight for myself. Uh -huh. So many times where someone just takes my parking and I'm like, ish. Let me just leave. Excuse me, you were willing to take bullets, yeah, I mean, but you're not willing you to fight for a I'm parking saying? space. You, see, you understand what I'm saying? So there's instances where, as human beings, we mm. fail to fight for ourselves, Got we it. fail to show up for ourselves. So we need to be empathetic to those who fail to show up for themselves because there's many things that affect their esteem and their self-confidence that stop them from fighting for themselves. You know what I mean? Mm. Maybe they don't feel like they're worth fighting for and they don't feel like they're worth fighting for even for themselves. And we should be empathetic. And for us to be so aloof and to just assume that, you know, it's every man for himself is not going to help anyway. You know mm. what I mean? That attitude doesn't help anyway. So I'd rather err on the side of um, just being generous with my ability to fight for others. 
you know what I mean? Whether or not it's, you know, reciprocated or appreciated. As long as I know that I've done the best that I can, that makes me more satisfied with I, looking at the reflection in the mirror and not seeing someone that, you know, um, I wouldn't uh, want children growing up to emulate. You fought for a couple of people, speaking about fighting for people, and you've put a lot of people on, especially in the music space and, you know, mm. the music, with the work that you've done in the music space. I mean, mm. you're the one who invented mm. dancing and DJing. DJ. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, well, I, I made it popular. I made it pop. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Because obviously um, I was DJing and basically orchestrating a hip hop and a rap show. And, you know, all of us needed to make the show accentuate. Like the, the guitarist started also doing dance routines. The Hectic. drummer would have his own routine. So everyone had their own little thing that they do. And me behind the decks, I'd just be hyping up the crowd, jumping up and down, dancing, doing, you know, I don't know, whatever, pirouettes <laughs> and twirls and stuff like that, you know, and curtsies. And curtsies. <laughs> As somebody who's between South Africa and America, <laughs> with your strong a South African American, a yeah. South African American, yeah. what 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 do the politics look like? So we're seeing a lot of South Africans move in to the America. entertainment space. They go to America. No, they don't go to America. They, they go to they, Europe. A lot of them go to Europe. You see a lot of South Africans being exploited by Europeans. By Europeans, because we've got the best music in the world. Uh huh. So. In Amsterdam, they're inviting them. Yes. In in Germany, they're inviting them. True story. In all these places, they're inviting them. And I ask these artists, who are obviously geniuses because they can create this artistic work, uh -huh. um, but to extend some of that genius to just analyzing, you know, certain things. Why is it that we don't know any artists from Amsterdam? Who's the biggest artist from Amsterdam? Who's the biggest artist from France? Who's the biggest artist from Germany? Who's the biggest artist? So when you expect to go to Germany and become a global star when they can't when even they produce can't. their own global stars. No, you're just being exploited because you've got something new that's fresh, that's better than anything that they've got, and they can pay you less than they pay the people that they view as stars who are white mm. in the same country. So you're being exploited. And also you're also you're... being exploited in Europe, which has got a very small black population compared to America. America's got f almost as many blacks as South Africa. You know, mm. there are 42 million black people in America. You know, 47 in South Africa. Therefore, you know, we're very similar. Um, English is a very big language in South Africa. English is English a very is big, big language. In America as well. No, in black America. Okay. Yeah. In America, there's also other languages. There's Hispanic and everything else. There's also Italians and everything else. It's oh. mixed. But English is the predominant language. But there are places in America where you'd find someone who works at a shop that does not speak, speak any English. English. You know, I mean, I was experiencing that a lot in, in Florida, like in Miami. Um, as well. Also in Texas, uh, I experienced that. And in New York, there are some shops where the people... People don't not, speak English. They don't speak English. But they work at a shop. They, it's like, because the price is So how does numbers. it work? You can see the price in numbers. Uh -huh. You bring the item. I scan it. You look at your slip. I mean, we don't need to have a conversation for me to sell you something, hello, right? Hello, it, I mean, no. it, that's the thing. It, once you're in this urban life of let's make everything about convenience, uh -huh. the humanity is Dies removed off. from everything else. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And that's it. It's like when you go, where am I, my nowadays? You know, you don't talk to the lady, and everything else. When I used to go to my, my back in 2009, 2008, 2007, whatever, we used to go under the bridge within the car because it was small. Okay. The lady would say, Oh, yes, oh, what else do you want this time? Okay, okay, ufuna loba, okay, ufuna loba, okay. And then she'd come and bring it out to us. We'd give her the money and we'd know the lady yes, that would that's be always serving us. It would be regular. But now it's like been commercialized. It's just a place that people can come to, strangers come to. And these people are just coming once or, you know, they're not repeat Get it. customers. You, you know what I mean? So you can't build a community of people that support that and there's no humanity mm. in this, you know, I don't know, experience, this cultural experience that we're having. It's mm. it's very commercialized. Do you think um, looking at Tyler, who's a South African in America, also in the entertainment space, mm. does she have a good community? If you could predict her future. Um, predict. I don't want to predict her future. Come on. The other boats. I know. I, I don't want to predict Oh, maybe future. don't predict. Calculate. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying like, um, we need to be very supportive of our exports because Get if it. we don't support them, then they will um, work for those that support them. And then they will act accordingly. Yeah. Trevor Noah. That's it. I want her to be the opposite of that. 
You know, what what I, mean? Mean? I want we, to we lean, love Trevor to lean, to lean into South Africa more and not. I mean, Trevor Noah is the biggest disser of South Africa. I mean, he's dissed South <laughs> Africa the most of anybody else. Anyone who's spread the most um, negative stereotypes about, about South, Africa, South Africa, he has the mean? biggest platform. I, isn't, wasn't that like Trevor's, um, even when he was in South Africa and was still a comedian in South Africa? Yeah, that's fine when you're doing it at home. In the family. Is in a, when we Masquarana. Uh, over so Christmas quite, as a family with your cousins. Do you, you think that's what Trevor is doing? No, guys. Uh, I'm just saying, uh, when you're with your cousins... As family in Nyakwaran, even ah. if you guys go to the same school, you're not going to take the things that you were saying inside your household at school for everybody, everybody else. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? So now that he's got a public platform, it's the same thing I felt about Black Coffee. Why wasn't he playing South African music? Now he's playing it. Now that he's seen that, you know, life South African is, music no, is, life is temporary. You could die in a plane crash without ever having played South African music. I'm just saying. You know what I mean? So now that you've seen that you are mortal, now you are coming to your senses. You're starting to listen to the people who are trying to talk to you into your senses before. So that's what I hope. And um, you keep supporting the reason China. why if we keep supporting them, yes. then they will, you know, keep trying to win more support from us. And also then what they do is as we support them, they break down bigger walls for more South Africans to come. As a That's it. But now when we see, ah, <clears throat> oh, she's made it. She's gone. Let's leave her. Then she will be gone. Then she and will she'll be, be gone, taken. Gone. And she'll be an asset for them and not for us. Because mm. right now, Trevor Noah is not an asset for South Africa. You know what I mean? I he's, a, he's an asset for America against China. He's spreading anti-China oh. uh, chi- chi- um, sentiments right now. He's working for the CIA. CIA. Directly, you know, he's the presenter of the White House Press Association Gala Dinner, you know what I mean, Um, which is broadcast on C-SPAN, the CIA media network, you know what I mean, the White House Press Authority is run under the CIA anyway, you know what I mean, the media in America is run by the CIA, you know that. We love Trevor. Yeah, yeah, you're brainwashed. So <laughs> you and everyone that do, not does that. loving somebody being brainwashed. I mean, it's, no, it's see, like, how I, can I you think... love your own enemy? The CIA killed Lumumba. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? You need to understand that they killed Lumumba. We're talking about what's happening in Congo right now and the atrocities. You know what I mean? The CIA have committed all these atrocities. But the CIA always... are the reason for the Palestinians you know, suffering the way they do because the CIA propped up Mossad. The CIA are the reasons for the coups that are happening all over Africa, the world, the, the, the South America. The, all the poverty, the, the illegal immigrants, the caravan is all caused by the CIA. They took out presidents. They killed them. They, the CIA took out Zuma. Then I said, I'm saying put in their own agent, Cyril. So, you know? so I'm just saying. So shoot Trevor. He, he works for the CIA. He works for the devil himself. So I, there's no way I can like him. I can empathize with him. 